Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Campos. I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager at Splunk. I've been in the industry for about 15 years and I'm very excited to be here at the DevOps Enterprise Summit. We're going to talk today about making applications observable with OpenTelemetry. Let's get started. So when it comes to making applications observable with OpenTelemetry, we want to first understand why we want to make these applications observable. It happens to be with the new architectures that we are leveraging today with our deployments. Historically, we've always started with a monolithic architecture where these applications were deployed in a specific client server type deployment. And we, were, we found them to be very slow moving with uh, infrequent changes and limited user transactions. Things were kind of housed in one place and not necessarily distributed. When we looked at a microservice architecture and we evolved to a microservice architecture, we found that we had much more distributed services, tens to 10 to 100 different services across many different hosts, across different clouds with high transaction volumes and frequent code pushes across our CICD pipeline. Things became almost, or things are, a bit overwhelming when it comes to microservices architectures. And let me give you an example when it comes to monitoring. We can see in the left, we have an example of the different microservices that put together on the right, this online boutique. And it's a very simple online boutique where we can purchase several items. And you can see all of the different microservices that are involved from the front end service to the checkout service, to the payment service, currency service, and more. Each one of these particular microservices are, com are communicating between one another, and, and we have very high, high transaction rates that occur between each and every one of these microservices. So if we factor in, if we may have an issue with respect to one of these services, where is this issue located? Where can we find this issue? We're not necessarily clear on where we could find this issue. So this is where observability can really help with respect to uh, helping us find that needle in the haystack. This is why I cannot stress enough that latency is absolutely the new downtime. Absolutely the new downtime. We find ourselves consistently dealing with SLAs for customer experience, making sure that we, we consider this as top of mind. And this is exactly why, I, again, I can't stress it enough that latency happens to be the new downtime. It's not our CPU being pegged. It's not memory pegs. It is latency. So this is exactly why monitoring must evolve into observability. And observability really helps detect, investigate, and resolve the unknowns of the unknowns quickly and efficiently. When we monitor, we're just reactively keeping an eye on things, seeing if something goes wrong, a server went down, a service went down, but with observability, we really can understand what happened and why. And it's because we have visibility into each and every one of these transactions and each and every one of these microservices. And we're gonna talk about how we do that with OpenTelemetry today. So the first step in making your application observable is all about telemetry. We have to gather the data. The data is the key to understanding exactly what's going on. So how do we do that? Well, first, we're going to build a strategy. We have to think about our application, and we have to think about our application in detail. Factor how many microservices we have, factor in what we want to what we want to monitor, what we want to see happening with these applications, and then of course, factor in the information that we want to highlight. And this is where instrumentation comes in. We instrument our applications. We instrument our applications to capture traces and spans and metrics to really see exactly what's going on. And then third is configuring our observability backend so that we can build the dashboards and we can build the charts that we need to clearly see exactly what's going on for our organization to maintain their SLAs. So now let's take a look at some terminology. With observability, we look at it as the measure of how well internal states of a system can be inferred from knowledge of its external outputs. This is everything and anything that happens within our outputs of the different systems that we're using or the microservices that we're using. And some of the data sources that we're going to collect involve traces, which track the process of a single request, metrics, 
which are a measurement about a service captured at a given runtime, and then of course the logs, which are produced when of course certain blocks of code are executed. Again, all of this data is important and I definitely invite you guys to check out our glossary with respect to open telemetry on all of the different terms that are used throughout the open telemetry community. So when it comes to tracing, we have to first think about the context that we we'll use. Typically we'll find that W3C tracing context is what's used. And this is gonna be the format for propagating distributed tracing context between these given services. And the tracer comes in and it's actually responsible for creating spans and interacting with the context. And the spans are the unit of work that contains a name, a given action, of course, a start time and an end time. And they'll typically contain the kind, which is either the client or the server, or the producer, or the consumer. And then, of course, any attributes like the version number or any type of metadata that we want to include. And then, of course, the given event and any helpful links to really batch the operations. We're gonna see that uh, when we look at a, a configuration example here in a minute. And then of course, we have the sampler. And the sampler is when we, we wanna leverage that sampler when not all requests in a given application uh, are really needed to be captured. We wanna balance observability and expenses. And then we also have the span processor, which is responsible for forwarding these spans to the exporter and that exporter being potentially the OTLP exporter, the Jaeger exporter, Prometheus, Splunk Observability Cloud, 